Instagram. Ein. Wo. Ba. Ja. Da. Dose. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد أحييكم بتحية الإسلام فأقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Almighty God the most gracious the most merciful and I greet you with a universal greeting of peace and that is السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته which means may the peace mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you Brothers and sisters, I'm very happy to be here once again as we continue with lessons in Arabic. <clears throat> I am here live, coming to you live from the television station of TIN, the Islamic Network. And before I start or continue my lesson today, I would just like to say <clears throat> that I wish that each and every one of you, you had a wonderful Eid and that we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts from us, all of us, our fasting, our standing in the nights of Ramadan, performing extra salawat, and all of the good things that we would have done in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all of these good things. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also that he will make us continue on the path of righteousness and obedience to him and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My beloved brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we want to now continue with lessons in Arabic. And in our previous sessions, we looked at all of the letters of the alphabet. And today, inshallah, we are going to move to something new with regards to reading the Arabic and also speaking. As I've indicated earlier on in one of the other programs, earlier programs, that in learning any language you have to approach the language from the four basic skills that is reading writing speaking and listening so we are here not only to read arabic but also to write and to speak and also to listen inshallah and we hope as the time goes by inshallah eventually we will be able to say a lot of things in the Arabic language. <clears throat> so just to refresh your memory very quickly, inshallah, I would like to state that there are 28 letters in the Arabic alphabet. Arabic is written from right to left. There are 28 letters. 25 of them are consonants. One, the first letter of the alphabet, which is Aleph, is a long vowel, functions only as a long vowel. It has no sound of its own. The last two letters of the alphabet, ya, wow, and ya, these two letters, they function both as consonants and as vowels, long vowels, that is. <clears throat> so 25 are consonants. One, the alif, the first one of the alphabet, is a long vowel, only serves as a long vowel, and wow and ya, they have two functions, consonant as well as vowels. <clears throat> I've also mentioned that the Arabic um, letters, whenever they occur in words, uh, they are connected to each other. So all of the letters, they connect to each other, uh, with the exception of six letters. And these letters, inshallah, we will be looking at them in some later part of our program, if not tonight, maybe in one of the coming programs, inshallah. And I would also like to mention that in our previous programs, one of the previous programs, we looked at the joining of a few of the letters, um, the ba, ta, and tha, and also the jim, ha, and kha. So today, inshallah, we'll be looking at some more letters of the alphabet, and also we're going to introduce the vowels. <coughs> the vowels are of two kinds, and we will look at them, inshallah, tonight. So let's uh, write here, <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Notice Bismillah, the first letter is a ba, and it is only half of the letter ba because it is 
going to be attached to another letter. This is the head of the letter scene. <coughs> scene is also half of the letter scene because it is to be attached to another letter, which is the letter meme. So that is ba, scene, and meme. This is the word Allah, and the word Allah consists of an alif, lam, another lam, and the letter ha. Ha, which is coming down to the end of the letter, the third to last letter of the alphabet. Ha. We have another alif here, and a lam, and then a ra. Ha, Meem, Noon. And then we have an Alif again. Lam, Ra, Ha, Ya, <coughs> two dots below. As long as you see two dots below, it means it is a Ya. And we have the letter Meem. So this here, <coughs> now it's a vowel. It's a vowel. And tonight, inshallah, we're going to learn about um, vowels. Inshallah. All right, uh, what I have written here is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It means in the name of Allah, the most gracious, um, <coughs> the most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <coughs> now we're going to look at this letter here. This letter is a letter, we have done all of the letters of the alphabet, and that is the letter Mim. Mim. Let's write it again here. Mim. Again. Mim. Mim can also be written like this. Like this. Like this. Like this. Okay? <clears throat> so Mim, Mim, Mim. They're all memes. The letters can be attached to each other. Okay, so if we are looking at vowels tonight, vowels, okay, the first statement I would like to say about vowels is that there are two kinds of vowels, right? You have a short vowel and you have long vowels. <coughs> vowels, basically, they are signs that are written either above the letters or below the letters. Okay, the vowels are signs that are written above the letter or below the letter. Okay, so we're going to deal or look at the short vowels for now. The short vowels, so we say they are signs. Let me write the word signs here. Okay, signs. And there are three signs. <coughs> the first one is called a fatha. Fatha. I will write the name here. Fat. Ha. Fatha. Uh, this is what I'm talking about here. This. Here. If I have to give a definition of the fatha, this line here just indicates that the sign is written above the letter. Okay. So you're not to worry about this line here, this horizontal line, but what the fatha is is really this slanting line. So fatha is a slanting line, okay, slanting to the right hand side that is written above the letter and it has the sound of A. Okay, so I'm going to write the A right here. Okay, it sounds like A. How the letter so A sounds? Ah. The sound of the letter A is ah. So fatha sounds like ah. Okay. <clears throat> then you have another sign, just like this one, slanting to the right, but it is written below the letter. This one is called kasra. K-A-S-R-A-H. Kasra, pronounced as kasra. And the kasra sounds just like the letter E or the letter I. Okay? Kasra. 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 It is a slanting line that is written below the letter. 
slanting to the right, written below the letter, and it has the sound just like the letter E or I. And the last vowel is also written above the letter, and it looks like this, like a little wow, a tiny wow, okay, above the letter. And this one is called Dhamma, D-A-M-M-A-H, Dhamma. And it has the sound of O or U. <coughs> so in the English language, we have five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. In Arabic, we have only three. Okay? Fatha, Kesra, or Dhamma. Okay? <coughs> so we want to look now how the Fatha is pronounced in a word or on, on letters. Okay? So if we were to go back to this letter meme, and I put a fatha like this. So it's a meme with the fatha, it's called meme fatha, gives me the sound of ma, like that, ma. Meme fatha is ma, okay? Same thing here, ma, good, ma. If I were to put a kesra, for the meme here, it will be me, me, all right, meme kasra, me, and if I were to put a dhamma here, it will be mu, so you have ma, me, and mu, ma, me, mu, ma, me, mu. That is how easy it is. Very simple. <clears throat> All we have to remember is, this, is the sound of what we get from the vowels. And as long as you know the letters, we have already spent a lot of time um, looking at the letters of the alphabet, and we know the sound of each one of the letters. So the name of the letter is meme, but what is more important than the name is the function of the letter or the sound of the letter. Okay. So meme, the song is m, m. So meme with the vowel fatha gives you ma. Meme fatha ma. The next one, meme kasra, mi, mi. And meme dhamma, mu. So you have ma, mi, and, and mu. <coughs> All right, so I can erase this here now so that you can concentrate a little bit more on the Arabic rather than English. So, mim fatha ma. Mim fatha ma. Now, if we were to join, like let's say we have two memes coming together. So, we have meme and another meme will go like this. Or we can write it like this and like this. It's also a meme. And then I can put in some vowels here. All right, ma, mi, mu, ma. Ma, 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 ma. All right, ma, 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 ma. All right, I got this one. Mi, mi. Mi, mi. So you have mi, mi, ma, ma, mu, ma, ma, mi. Very easy, very simple indeed. It is very easy to, <coughs> to read the letter with the vowel. Now if we were to take another letter of the alphabet, and let's say put in the same vowels. So I'm going to erase this now. Remember, fatha is the slanting line that is written above. The kasra is the one below. And this one, like little wow, is called dhamma. All right? And you remember the sound of each one of them. I'm going to leave that there so you could sink in a little bit more. <coughs> OK, let's look at another letter of the alphabet. Let's say this letter. I'm sure that you can remember this letter. 
all right? It has one dot here, all right? Think about it. You remember that letter? <coughs> it's easy to remember. Imagine this here is the sun, and it is exactly overhead, and this is the whole earth here. So if the sun is exactly overhead, you say it is noon. So the name of this letter is noon. That's the name of the letter. <coughs> so if I were to take the letter and give it a vowel, noon, fatha, gives me the sound of na. Na. So noon, fatha, gives me what? Na. Noon. Kasra gives me the sound of ni, ni, <coughs> noon kasra, ni, and noon, but the dhamma gives me what sound? Nu. So we have na, we have ni, and we have nu. What about if we were to join the letter mim to the letter noon? Let's see. We have mim, and then we have noon and let's give both of them vowels me na me na all right let's see again noon and join to a meme na me na me okay now look at this one here now. Look carefully at this. We have noon and we have a tiny circle above it. This indicates that the letter, the letter is vowelless. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Like that. It means the letter has no vowel. It doesn't have a fatha, it doesn't have a kasra, it doesn't have a dhamma. So you put a circle over it, a tiny circle, indicating that the letter is vowelless. So when you see the letter that, that has this sign above it, the letter is said to be sakina. So the description of this noon, we will say it is noon sakina, meaning it, it is a noon with the sign that is called sukun. So the name of this sign is called sukun. Let me write it right here. Su kun. That's this, this little tiny circle. Sometimes the sukun can also be written like this, like a tiny back to front um, C. Okay, so the sukun has two forms. Okay, this part is a little bit straight and this one goes down like this. <coughs> so sukun can be written like a tiny circle or a tiny back to front C. What is the function of a sukun? What does the sukun indicate? Sukun basically indicates the absence of a vowel. That means there is none of, no fatha, no kasra, no dhamma. That's the first thing. The letter is vowelless. And the second thing is that the letter must be pronounced in conjunction with the previous letter. Whatever letter is before it, it must be pronounced in conjunction with it. And this is really how a syllable is formed. So now, <clears throat> if we were to go back to this word here, and let's say we change this fatha to a sukun here, okay? Then we will have mim kesra, and then you have the noon sakina. So we say min, min, okay? Min. So, if we were to write down the, let's say, <coughs> we were to write down this, the sound of each letter here, the noon, let's say, with all of the vowels, we will say noon fatha is na, and noon kesra is ni, all right, and noon dhamma is nu, all right. This one, we just put an N. It has no vowel. Okay? No vowel. Now, you would also notice that I did not write 
Ni or NO. And the reason for that, because we said Kessler can either be I or E or I, and Dhamma can either be O or U. Why did I not use to say, why did, not, why did I not write the word N-O? Because as English-speaking people, we may be tempted to say no. N-O, we will say probably no. All right? Most likely, uh, almost 100%, you might see N-O and you will say no. But N-U, um, noon Dhamma, sorry, <coughs> the noon with the Dhamma, is not really no, but it is no. And hence the reason you cannot really depend on transliteration because the transliteration can also be misleading. Okay? And I am just using here this transliteration temporarily so that you could understand what I'm saying. And I would not be using transliteration as I will be teaching you Arabic, but just here for initial stage so that you can have an idea. Okay? So what I want you to observe here right now as you have the letter and you have the vowel. So you have na, ni, nu. This one, it has a sukun. It has none of the three vowels. So we just go n. Sukun again, I would say, sukun again indicates that the letter is vowelless. That's one. And secondly, the sukun indicates that the letter must be pronounced in conjunction with the previous one. In other words, the noon, she needs help. Okay, she, she cannot move. These um, vowels are actually called harakat. And harakat, <coughs> or haraka, which is a singular, it means a movement. Harakat means movements. So the letters with the vowel, they can move. You see, when you have a syllable, you, you could move on. Like you have a consonant and a syllable, you could move to the next syllable. So it is the same idea. The letter with the vowel, you, you could move to the next letter. But the letter with the sukun cannot go on, on, it, on her own. She needs help. So she has to go with a letter that has a vowel, all right, to form that syllable. So when we look at this word here now, we have meme, kesra, and the noon. We'll have me, meme, kesra is me, and the noon, n. So together we will have min, min, okay, min. And <coughs> min, the word min, means from. Okay? So what I'm trying to do um, simultaneously, I'm trying to teach you to read. I'm also trying to incorporate um, some words, inshallah, that you can also benefit from their meanings. Okay? So you will also learning some Arabic words, so building your Arabic vocabulary. So it is an interesting word. It is used a lot in our everyday speech. And you need to know this word because we will be using it a lot um, in learning to speak Arabic. Min. Right here from this word also, if I were to change this mim kesra to a sukun, then we have noon fatha joined to this mim. Mim is sakina. So we have na m. Nam, nam, nam means sleep. It is, you know, you're telling someone to, to sleep. In other words, it's the imperative form, sleep. Okay? It's like a command, sleep. Like you're telling a little child, go and sleep, sleep. All right? So, nam, nam, it is for the masculine. So, nam means what? <coughs> sleep. Okay? Now, if we were to change, switch around the vowels here, Okay, all right, let's say we put a fatha here. The meaning of this, the pronunci pronunciation is different and also the word is different. Man, and man means who. Who. Okay, so meme fatha is ma. The noon is vowelless, it is sakina. So, it must be pronounced in conjunction with the previous letter. So, meme fatha is ma, joined to the noon, man. So, meme, that is M, A, ma, joined to the N, which is that. You have ma, n, man. Not man, but man. <coughs> right? Again, we are seeing if we have M, A, N, we might say man. But it's not man, it's what? 
man. Good. So man. Um, let's look at this now. We can use this again. So I'm going to take this away here. Okay, you know the meaning of man. As I have man, min. <coughs> man, min. All right? And then you could put a word here. All right? Let's say, um, let's use an easy word. We use another letter of the alphabet. Let's say this is the letter calf. Now this, in reality, is the letter calf. And what we have done here, actually, <coughs> is that we have removed this little tiny s from here. And this perpendicular stroke here, we, we slant it a little bit, bringing it inside here a little bit like that. Okay? And then... You put it like that. That's the letter calf. It's easy to remember the letter calf, the shape of it, from this to this. <coughs> and here is another way how you can remember this letter calf. Calf, the letter calf, begins with the letter K. All right, and that is the K right there. K, capital. So you have a K there. So you just remove this line from the K, and then you come like this. This is now you're ready to attach. <coughs> so you have calf, all right? Calf, the letter calf. Okay. So calf fatha is ka. Mm, then let's say we have a noon. That's noon. Now, how does this noon look like this? This is noon also. You see, when <coughs> the letters are attached to each other, there is a, a slight variation in the shape of, of the letters. So here you're seeing it a little bit deeper, all right? Um, if we have a line here, you can see, okay, that's how it is, partially below the line. And I've explained that in previous um, classes, where the noon, it goes, part of it goes below the line, and part above the line, okay? But when it is written, joined <coughs> in a word, it stays above the line, okay? It stays above the line. So it is not as deep as it is, okay? So that's noon, and let's say we have the letter dal. And noon fatha is na. So we have if you put an alif here. All right. Dal fatha is da. <coughs> and the alif, as I told you, is a long vowel lengthening the fatha sound. I have indicated that in one of the previous classes. So you have man, min, Canada. Question. All right. Man, min, Canada. Who? from Canada. Right? That's how it easy. How easy it is. <coughs> man min Caroni. Man min Trinidad. Man min Port of Spain. All right? Man min. Okay? So let's um, revise that very quickly. We have <coughs> Fatha, Kasra, and Dhamma. Fatha above the line, okay, above the line. Kasra below the line, Dhamma above the line. A, I, and U. Okay? Short vowels. The short vowels are signs that are written above the letter. Okay? And you have looked so far tonight at the letters Mim. <coughs> and the letter noon, and we look also at calf and dal. Now we move on to letters that we have already looked at previously. Let's say we have the letter. Let's say, supposing we want to join, let's say, 
the letter tha and ba <coughs> and ta. We want to join these three letters together. All right? What are we going to do? So <coughs> you have learned previously that the letters ba, ta, this is a sequence, how it appears in the alphabet. Ba, ta, tha. Aleph is first. Aleph, ba, ta, tha. You have learned previously that when you have to join these letters, you have to cut them in half. Okay? So when you have to attach these letters to each other, naturally you will have the letters taking initial form, or even they, they are in the middle of a, let, of a word, or they could also be at the end of a word. Okay, so the letter can either be at the beginning of a word, or in the middle of a word, or in the ending of the word. So, if we have to join, we have to cut in half. So we're going to cut this tha in half, and we will have, let's say this is the line, okay? You have the letter tha cut in half. Take the first portion of the tha, cut it in half like this, and then we shift the dots to the end. So it looks like this, tha. But then the ba, we cut it in half. We have ba. All right. And we put it out there. And then ta. Ta. Like this. Now the ta has nothing. If no letter is coming afterwards, you just write the letter completely. Okay? So it comes like this. And then we just attach it, continue the attachment. There we have fa fatha, fa, ba fatha, ba, ta fatha, ta. So we have fa, ba, ta, fa, ba, ta. Okay? Fa, ba, ta. Let's suppose now you want to join the letter ha and the letter jim and the letter ba so ha plus jim plus ba equals to what so ha <coughs> As we have mentioned previously, let's look at on top here again, the sequence of the letter in the alphabet. After ba, ta, tha, we have what? Jim, ha, and we have kha. Good? Jim, ha, kha. The first three of them, we, we cut them like this, vertically. And the other three, we cut them horizontally. All right, we cut horizontally. So the ha appearing in the beginning of the word, we take the top part of it, which is this part here. And now because it is to be attached to another letter, instead of going down, we're moving this way. Okay? <coughs> and then we have the jim. Again, the same thing. Instead of going down, we move this way. All right? And we just attach it like this. Okay? Let, just it, let, it, let it touch the letter. And of course, don't forget your dot for the letter jim. And then we have the letter ba. Okay? Let's put in some vowel. Ha, ja, ba. Ha, ja, ba. All right? Ha, ja, ba means um, to cover. And from the word hajaba, you have the word hijab. All right? So let's see if we could write the word hijab. That's the letter ha. He. So we put a kesra for he. And then we have the letter jim. Okay. Let me write that a little bit clearer. Like this. Jim. He. Ja. Oh, we want ja. All right, so then we lengthen this with the aleph. 
Hija, and then the letter Ba, like this. Hija, B. Notice the Aleph was not connected or attached to the Ba. And the reason for that is because the Aleph is one of the six letters, as I have indicated, that do not allow attachment, okay, from the left. So now, we will take a short break, inshallah, and when, when I come back, I would, we would look at those six letters that do not allow attachment to the left. All right, so stay tuned. You held my hand to steady me Till I was ready to make a stand On my own to fear While my world was crumbling down And you tried your best to shelter me From the coming of the storm You opened my eyes to see That all hope was not gone O ye who believe, eat of the good things wherewith we have provided you, and render thanks to Allah, if it is indeed He whom ye worship. bodies the Muslims believe our bodies will not just become rotted and we will go into thin air and nothing will happen to us we as Muslims believe that we will go in a world of barzakh it is like a waiting place the world of the grave and there can be torment of the grave or there can be peace and tranquility sleeping comfortably until Yawm Al Qiyamah Subhanallah seeing the windows a window that shows us the Jannah Insha'Allah Ameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome once again, brothers and sisters, as we continue with lessons here in Arabic. Uh, brothers and sisters, I mentioned a while ago that there are some letters of the alphabet that uh, do not allow attachment from both sides. We want to look, to look at these six letters now, and they are very easy to remember. The first letter is the letter of the first letter of the alphabet, which is Aleph. Okay, and after Aleph, we have two pairs. We have Dal and we have Dal. Okay, one letter reminds you of the other one. And then we have Ra, no dot, and we have Za with a dot. So we have five letters so far, and the last one is the letter Wow. If you notice carefully, uh, observe carefully, you would, you would observe that they have, you know, the shapes are almost, you know, very similar. It, it has this kind of curve, okay? And what can also help to remember these letters is that they occur, you know, in the same sequence of the alphabet. So you have dal, dal, ro, za. These four, they come together. This one is the first letter of the alphabet, and this is the wow, right? So now we make a little, some lines here to aid the memory and inshallah I'm sure you can remember them very quickly by looking at um, this chart. Aleph, first letter of the alphabet. Wow, coming down to the last, it is the second to last letter of the alphabet. And you have Dal, Dal, Ra, Za. Okay, so <coughs> these six letters, 
they do not allow attachment from both sides. They only allow attachment from one side, which is the right side. The right side, which is this side. Okay? So now, if I have to attach, let's say, um, a ba to a dal, all right? We have the letter ba plus dal. It will be like this. Ba, which is half of the ba. Remember, it is to be attached like this. And then we have dal. So it allows the attachment from the right side. But if we were to change the sequence and we put the dal first, and then we have a ba, okay, we <coughs> will have the word looking like this. Okay. Okay, the ba does not allow attachment from, from this side, <coughs> okay, from the right, from the left side only from the right side. So <clears throat> this word dub, for example, it means a bear. All right? Uh, let's say, for example, you have a raw plus the letter ba. It looks like this, raw and ba. OK? So you have the word rub, and rub means lord, OK, written like this. So what we can say about these letters, they, these letters are just like some people, you know, some human beings. Um, they like others to reach out to them, but they don't like to reach out to others. All right? So these letters, these six letters, they want others to come to attach to them. All right? But they themselves, they don't like to be attached to others. So they do not reach out to others, but others must reach out to them. Huh? Just like some people. Yeah. So remember these six letters. They are very easy to remember. And what you can probably do is um, try to do some homework, you know. Try to take some letters of the alphabet and um, see if you could attach them. <coughs> okay. So for example, if you have, let's say, the letter ba plus an aleph plus another ba, what would you get? So ba is the beginning of the word. I write it like this. Okay. Shift the dot more to the right, to the end of it. And then we have the aleph. Okay, so this is the aleph here. And it's attached here. Okay. So you have ba. And then the next ba here, like this. <clears throat> Notice the ba is not attached to the alif. Okay? So you have the word ba, b, bab. Bab means a door. Bab means what? A door. A door. Bab. <coughs> bab means a door. Bab. Okay? You can do the same thing. The letter ta plus an alif plus ba equals to like this tab all right tab tab means he repented he he repented okay he repented tab and you know if you change up <coughs> the dots and so on, you could have different letters, all right? <coughs> so you're going to erase repented here now because I'm going to change the dots, all right? Let's say we put here a ba and a ta. We have what? Bat, bata. And bata means what? He spent the night, all right? Like this, all right? Bata means he spent the night, bata, and so on. So it is very easy to, to join these letters as long as you remember the rule. Remember, these letters, they only join from the right-hand side. So as a general rule, what we can say is that 
all of the letters of the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, they allow attachment from both sides, with the exception of these six letters. These six letters, they only allow attachment from the right-hand side. So next time when you pick up the Quran, my beloved brothers and sisters, or any Arabic uh, book with Arabic writing in it, you, if you were to look carefully and you see these words, um, these letters occurring in words, you will notice that the letter coming after any one of these letters will not be attached to it. Even though they may occur in the same word, right, like right here, it is one word, Bab means a door, all right? There's one family, a small family with three letters, all right? Yet they have this separation, all right? There is a space between it, okay? They are not so united. And they are basically, the Arabic um, um, letters, you know, they encourage the, the togetherness and the unity. Um, in the English language, we have, you know, it's optional. You could um, separate each one from the other one. Each one, you know, is separated. Or you can join all of them together. But in the Arabic, they, they try to join all of them. But these six, they, they don't like to join to others coming afterwards. All right, so these are the... Um, the six letters of the Arabic alphabet that do not allow attachment from that left side. Okay, we are finished with that. Now I want to remind you of <coughs> some of the questions or the sentences that we have um, learned previously. And we have, for example, um, the question of um, how are you? We say what? Kaifa haluk. Kaifa haluk. Now that you are familiar with some of the letters of the alphabet in their different um, shapes, I just indicated to you that is the letter kaf. And this letter here shapes just like the ba, or the ta, or the tha, but it has two dots below. As long as you see two dots below, it, it means it is a ya, okay? Because ya is the only letter of the alphabet that has two dots below. There is no letter in the whole alphabet that has two letters, two dots below except the ya. It is the only letter that has two dots below. As long as you see two dots, no question is asked. It is a ya. So we have kaf and we have ya. And then we have the letter fa. All right? So kaf, fatha, give us, give us what? Ka. And then Sukun here. This is a ya. So we have kai, kai, and fa fata is fa. Kaifa, kaifa. Kaifa means how. Okay. Kaifa, how. This is the letter ha, half of it. And we have an alif. So we have ha. Now this is the letter lam, lu, so we have ha, lu, and this is the letter kaf, ha luk, all right, kaf ha luk ka, or kaf ha luk ki, question, kaf ha luk, now the Arabs, the Arabs, they do not pronounce the ending vowels. They pronounce the letter. They take the sound of the letter. So the letter is kaf, and the sound of the letter kaf is k. k. So when they are pronouncing this word, as long as it is the final word in your statement, you just end with a k sound. The, the sound of the letter. It is a kaf, and the sound of the letter kaf is k. So ha luk. Kaifa ha luk. Kaifa ha luk means how are you? And you know, literally, this word hal means condition, and the kaf means your. It's a possessive pronoun. It really literally means how is your condition, but it is translated as how are you? Kaifahaluk. When you're asking this question, be sure to ask it in a questioning way. Do not ask the question as if you are making a statement. Don't say kaifahaluk. Kaifahaluk. You have to sound it like a question. And then you say <coughs> in your answer, 
all right? B, this is a ba. Okay, the ba can be written like this also in its traditional way, like this, how you know it. That's the ba. And this is the letter kha. This is the dot for the ba. And this is the dot for the kha. So ba kesra is b. Kha fatah is kha. The ya has nothing. So we say khai rin. All right, we're going to learn this one, this vowel, this, what this means in the next session, inshallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa, which is the wow. Alhamdu. And then lillah. All right, we'll learn all of this. Bi khayrin walhamdulillah. Bi khayrin walhamdulillah. Kayfa haluk? Bi khayrin walhamdulillah. I'm fine. Praise be to Almighty Allah. Praise be to God. Because you always attribute whatever your condition is. You praise Almighty God because, you know, things could have been worse off. You know, whatever your condition is, you thank Almighty God for your condition, your well-being. If you're sick, all right, you still thank Almighty God for whatever your condition is. Because no matter how sick you are, the, the, the situation could have been even um, worse off than that. All right, so to end our session today, inshallah, uh, we would just like to look very quickly at the letters of the alphabet. Very quickly, we want to go over all of the letters of the alphabet. And I, ho I hope, inshallah, and I trust that you would um, look at the screen as we will say them uh, once again. <coughs> this is Aleph, 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 Ba. Ba, notice how it is written from right to left. Ba, b, b, ba, b. Ta, two dots above. Ta, t, 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 ta, t. Tha, th, tha, tongue between your upper and lower incisors. Tha, jim, jim. Notice how the jim is written partially above the line and partially below the line. Jim, j. J, ha, ha, pronounced with a uh, sustained expulsion of air. Ha, 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 ha is the sister of the letter Jim. And likewise, the letter Kha, one dot above. Kha, with a grating sound. Kha, 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 Kha. The next one is called Dal, Dal. Just remember Dal, what you like to drink or eat. Dal, right? And Val, Val, one dot above. Val, Dal and Val, sisters. And you will find that the letters coming in pairs now. Ra, Ra. Notice how the Ra is written. One third above the line, two thirds below. Ra, R. It's in a wrong, pronounced in a wrong manner. The next one is Zai, or Za. Za, with one dot above. Za, Za, Z. The next one is seen, s, seen, s, like a hissing sound. Seen, s. The same shape is the letter sheen, and this one has three dots above. Sheen, sh, sh, sword, sword, a rounded sound, sword. The sound is like a whistling sound. Next is the letter baad. Baad has a dot. Shaped just like sod, it's dod. The Arabic language is also referred to as the language of dod because of its unique sound. Dod. Dod. Ta. The next letter is called ta. Ta. Sound is close to the letter ta, but this one is rounded. And this one is called va. 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 Okay? So sod, dod, all of these four letters, they are more emphatic in their pronunciation. The next one is called Ain. This one that you're looking at is Ain. Ain. Contraction of your throat. Ain. It's a glottal sound. Ain. 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 Shaped just like Ain, but it has a dot above. Ain. Ain. All of the letters so far, you have seen them in pairs. Now, we are seeing them single. This one is called Fa. Fa, fa, stick the, your upper incisors down into your lips, your lower lips. Fa, fa, cough, cough, two dots above, cough, a rounded sound. 
curve and the shape is also rounded. This, and then it's the next letter is called calf. This one is pronounced in a flat manner. Calf. K, k, calf. Lamb. L, lamb. Notice how part of it goes below the line. Lamb. If it is attached to another letter, then it will be written above the line. Lamb. L. Meme. Meme. M. Noon. Noon. One dot in the middle. Noon. Ha. Ha. Ha is in the deeper throat, the lowest part of your throat. Ha. Like Hana. Ha. Wow. Wow. Like if you're exclaiming at something, you see, wow. Wow. Wah. Wah. Hamza. Hamza. Hamza floats in the air. Hamza. Sometimes it goes on a chair. And then the last and final letter of the alphabet is Ya. Two dots below. Ya. Ya. Okay? So those are the letters of the Arabic alphabet. Inshallah, you revise them and remember their song. And remember tonight we look at the short vowels, inshallah, for our next program. We will be looking at the long vowels, inshallah, next week. So until then, I say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.